us about Robert Morris a little bit. You studied him. Right. Well, I had a chance when I was at Northern Kentucky to play against Robert Morris, but obviously, you know, coaching changed since that point in time. I think their style is pretty similar, though, and and they're they're a really tough, gritty team. You know, I think from first you look at them on the defensive end, they're number one in the country right now in three point field goal percentage defense. Um, so they are, I think, their opponents are averaging 51 points a game. You know, they are on the offensive end. They're really versatile. They've got a lot of international kids who can who can score in a lot of different ways. They can all shoot it basically from the arc. They can get to the rim. Uh, they're very, they're very um, aggressive in terms of attacking the rim. They average, I think it's 14 offensive rebounds a game. They get to the free throw line 20 times a game. So they do a lot of things at a very, very high level. Is there size something that could maybe give you a bit of a tech, maybe a bit of a preview of what you're right. Right, they're very physical inside, you know, with, and I, I'm not going to say their names because I, I'm going to screw all of their names up, even though I've been listening to them on a number of the broadcasts, you know, but they do have some some kids who have are very physical inside, 6'2", 6'3", can stretch the floor and shoot it from the arc. They, again, they fly to the glass at a very, very high level. So, yes, I think it's, it's a very good precursor for us and a very good opportunity for us to continue to grow and get better as we look forward to Big 12 action. Oh yeah. Twenty-three. Yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix Gideon's pretty tough. Yeah. You know, she makes a lot of good things happen for him. Scores it at the rim. Can score either way. Just, I mean, the way she gets to the offensive glass is impressive, and then gets to the free throw line. She's also someone who can, you know, when your guard they run some ball screen action with her, and when she's involved in it, she can roll and score. She can pop and shoot it, or she can drive it and kind of drive it and take you right, and then set you up, cross you over, try to take you left again, spin back, score. So a very versatile kind of kid. I do know her name. Her name's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Phoenix Gideon, that's a pretty cool name. Montreal, right? That I don't know. I didn't study that roster that closely. I got it. I'm cheap. I got it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, what do you take away from the game last week? I mean, you have these – you go through a season and you have good performances and okay performances. You just kind of get through it and move on. What did you take from it? Well, I think it's – again, we've talked about this through the – the course of the the year we're going to find times when we're improving in one area and i thought we did that in our last two home contests i think we shot 41 percent from the arc or we 18 of 44 combined in those two games what didn't we do a very good job of we didn't take care of the ball at the same level that we'd been taking care of the ball at uh, we, we look at you know i think there are th this was a good week for us on Monday, we actually had a day to really just work on who we are and work on some fundamental things for us rather than just work on fundamental skills to prep for an opponent. So we could defensively, you know, we work on finishing plays, rebounding on a, on a daily basis. We do it in a lot of different ways, but that's something that we have to continue working on and we will always continue working on, but it's something we have to get better at. Worked at our transition defense. So even though in games maybe we haven't seen where it's hurt us as much in terms of team scoring as much, it, our assignments weren't as cleaned up as they need to be, and that will hurt us as time goes on. You know, we had a chance to work on post defense for all of our players because there are times that, whether it's in transition defense or there's a ball screen that gets switched, that everybody has to be able to defend inside. And as well as, again, looking forward to Robert Morrison, team that can really throw it inside and score inside, be ready for that as well. Then we had a chance to work on some ball screen defensive coverages for us and, and kind of try to work on, on not only cleaning up but adding to that as well. And, and then on the offensive end, it's just it's been good for us. We've been spending a lot of time working on you know, creating good shots, getting good shots. You know, we haven't spent as much time on some of the other fundamental skills taking care of the basketball. So that's an area that we've had to work on and, and go back and focus on transition offense for us as well. So it was nice to have a day to really kind of look at how do we work to keep getting better? Some zone offensive looks. We've seen a lot of zone, so we're going to see zone again. We won't see it with Robert Morris. They've played, I think it's, how many games have they played so far? Uh, eight games. Yeah, in eight games, I don't think they've played a possession of zone yet. So we don't anticipate seeing that against Robert Morris, but against Penn State, we will. Robert 
they will run it at times, you know, and they'll be selective with it, but they're not a team. It's interesting because we've seen some different styles, and that's really important for us, and this is a different style where they do, you know, they'll run selectively, they'll push it selectively. When they do, they try to get it inside, which makes a lot of sense. If you take that away, then they have opportunities to kick it out. Uh, but they are a team that doesn't necessarily force the tempo of the game a whole lot. Yes. Yeah, I think Georgia too, right? Is there, do you want to see some variety before you get into the Big 12? Is that kind of the objective there with what you're doing? Absolutely. I think we need to see different styles of play because obviously the Big 12 has that, offers that. You know, we've seen a little bit of it so far. We need to continue to, you know, make adjustments as time goes as time goes on within the course of a game we need to see different looks and, you know, it, it, or just in a certain game this team plays Oh, you know, Delaware State exclusive zone. And they hadn't really done that. They did it against us, and that was good for us to see, too. Yeah. I did get a chance to watch a little bit of the Penn State Minnesota game. Which overtime did you get to? Both? Did you stay awake? Yeah, no, just the first one. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, that was, I mean, obviously you're getting ahead, getting ahead of yourself here, but that was a team that put on a run and right. gave up run. It was one of those crazy games. Yeah, it was a fun game to watch. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Think, would you, from what you saw similarity wise, who do they remind you of? Well, I think the prob- to some extent, a little bit of an Oklahoma type of team, a little bit. They, they do things a lot differently. Their zones are very different, but they are teams that will play, you know, quite a bit of zone. You know, I, I don't know that I would – I haven't studied all the Big 12 teams this year and watched them as much because really trying to focus on, on who we are. So I don't know that there is one team that, that they really simulate a great so deal. Yeah. a little bit of carryover to when you play Oklahoma right off the bat. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, I think what our young ladies have really have really worked to make continue to make adjustments. You know, and I think against against NC Central and against NC State, and then NC Central and then Delaware State, we kind of went from being really aggressive at times against NC State and gambling and getting beat in some scenarios. You know, tried to to be a lot better at that in the last two games, but then maybe at the point of being not as aggressive enough. You know, and so there's always some give and take with that. I, I really thought, and this is these are things that that you guys can't don't have a chance to see. But before our Delaware State game, I thought we had our best shoot around. Now I don't think we had the great a great energy and played the way we wanted to, but but we saw improvement in that area. Then I think this week, I think Monday's practice, it was a great practice for us. And and I yesterday's practice was really good on the defensive end of things. Offensively, you know, we did we had stretches where we were really good. We had stretches where we had we have to learn to take care of the ball better. And so what we're seeing is improvement in certain areas. It doesn't always show right away in game scenarios, but it will get to that point. But if it doesn't get to that point in practice, then it's not going to get to that point in games. And so the the encouraging thing, the exciting thing for us is that we can see that we are improving at this point in time, and that's fun. Maybe I'm looking too far into this, Coach, so tell me if I am. You guys forced 25 turnovers but only commit 11 fouls against Delaware State. Is that um, a sign of what you just mentioned there about how maybe you're not gambling as much but maybe not aggressive enough? Like, is there a balance there to find? Well, there is. You know, I think there, I don't know what the number is. We'd like to keep our opponents off the free throw line. We, we, our goal is to keep them there 14 times or less in a game. You know, that's that's something that is important for us. But there's also a risk reward part of it too. I, I think one of the things we came, you know, we've been really working on all year is trying to make shots challenged, but not putting them at the free throw line, you know, and, and sometimes when you give up second chance opportunities, they get offensive rebounds. That's when you get yourself in really tough spots. And so trying to put ourselves in that scenario. So I think it is, it's, you know, we have some guards who can really pressure the ball. We do. We have some post kids who have good feet to get around and make life difficult and can defend on the perimeter because they have good footwork. They have, they have the ability to move. And, and so we have, we have opportunities to make life difficult for teams, but also hopefully not give them something 
early in transition that's easy or so not just pressing and trying to turn teams over and give them you know a risk or something a little bit easier but try to put pressure on them and we have some guards who can do that you know and and then make it difficult all the way throughout the possession without following and those are things that uh, yesterday's practice now who knows how we'll play against Robert Morris it's hard because it doesn't always carry over but I thought some of our defensive intensity awareness the way we're covering up for each other those are things that you get better at when you have chances to drill and, and have fun, you know, work on some of those fundamental skills. But when you have game, 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 you don't have as many of those opportunities to do that because you're working on the different movement. You know, for example, Robert Morris runs a, a motion offense that is very different and unique. And it, you have to be ready for that movement because if you're not, you're caught away from the basketball and all of a sudden the kid went to the other side of the floor. So some of it you have to be prepared in order to know kind of what to expect. You have to be in situations where you're game prep but it's been fun again this week to have some time to really work on us and now you can start seeing that carryover to even when they don't know what the other team's going to run we have our scout you know our, our practice guys running it and then all of a sudden they're making plays that we didn't really work on that skill but they're seeing the ball better their hands are more active they're communicating at a higher level they're finishing plays at a higher level so you know I think that those are things we have to continue to be able to do in, in within the course of our, our breakdown things and then it's got to carry over. Curious, um, when you're handed a box, what's the first thing you look at? I think it all depends on the game. You know, it really does. You, uh, whether it's taking care of the basketball, that's a really big thing for us. You know, field goal percentages on both sides of it. Take, but taking care of the ball, getting good shots, limiting opportunities, those type of things. Yeah. Those are, I think, things within your control. You know, are, are you defensively doing your best to hold them down? Are you keeping them off the glass? Are you keeping them off the free throw line? Seven games in, are you closing in on rotations that you want to stick with, or do you want to try to play pretty much the entire roster as you have for a lot of the games? Well, I think it's a combination of – we're still working on some combination pieces, and and I think we saw some of that a little bit in the last two games, trying to, you know, put some kids in different spots. I think the 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 really good thing for our our young ladies is that in practices we're seeing some players, and I, there's been some really good growth in the last probably week and a half with a number of players, and that's it, it's. It's unrealistic to believe that if you can't that if you don't do it in practice that you're going to just going to go in the game and be a gamer and do it. There are very few players that can actually do that. And so what's what is helpful and what helps build comfort and confidence in in our players is seeing it occur in practice, having success in practice, getting the reps and doing that and we're seeing that right now. Well, it's something that we work on right at the beginning of every every time that we're together in terms of so that we started in the summer in in June and there are some footwork things that help you be a better more efficient shooter hand placement you know but every player has their parts of their shots that are very different so but what's important you have to be in balance and you have to get the ball in your hand you know and so then get them a lot of reps Right. Right. I think they're improving at a very high level right now. You know, I, and again, these are things that that we've had a chance to celebrate. So, you know, when we we bought a charge mat so that we can teach our players when we run into them, they fall down and take a charge, and you know, rather than try to follow them when they're at the rim, and and so seeing ISIS in practices take some charges, and then it translates into a game. And you know, I think the next step for her, and we saw this yesterday in practice, and so I wrote a note on my on my sheet. This is something we need to get better at. Is you when you just commit to come take a charge, then you might the, the kid may the guard may stop and then try to dump it to the post kid. And now being ready for both of those, you know, rather than just making a determination, you know, now the determination is good because she's coming to help, but now making the next play, you know. So we're seeing some of those things, and and you can see it. I remember saying something ISIS yesterday. She's like, yeah, I know, I, I got it. You're right. You're right. Okay, that's the next thing. But we have to put her in those situations. That's the drill we have to work on next. You know, I, I think Messiah is someone who we saw yesterday in practice have some really good 
good opportunities at the rim, whether it was attacking from the perimeter, whether it was posting up, getting offensive rebounds, some different ways, and, and just seeing her continue to grow and develop, and that's been fun too. She had a really good post-up opportunity. Um, I think out of an out-of-bounds play, it came into Savannah. She penetrated the middle. She dumped it to Messiah. Messiah caught it, turned, scored it against his own. So seeing some of those development things, which has really been fun. Messiah was more of a guard, right? She was, she was kind of yeah. At this point in time, that's where we, we yeah. need her to, yeah. to be that, to defend that position for us. And, and she's someone with some size and, you know, learning how to be comfortable with it. And work, she's working a, a great deal on her shot at this point in time, being more comfortable, confident shooter from the perimeter. And pretty good skill player, too, right? Yeah. Right. It's been interesting because I think the uh, obviously, you know, before news breaks, news breaks. Right. So before that, the day that he was announced, uh, there were some people who were letting me know, I think this is who it's going to be. You know, and the, the word the the people who I know in the profession who have who either know him, have worked with him, it, whether it's at his university or in his conference or have worked alongside of him in, in different ways, have just incredible things to say about Ren. And, you know, he's got a, a, a great, very charismatic personality, you know, but he's, he's also very genuine. And I think there are a lot of people that are very excited about him being here. And, and so that the news about him coming and being our new athletic director is something that I've only heard great things about him. After meeting him, you know, he's got a lot to do at this point in time. And so he had a chance to stop by practice and, meet our young ladies and he didn't give us any shooting skills or any demonstrations because he said that wasn't his game even though he played and he was coaching but he said he could defend and rebound so we'll, we'll bring him back to practice see if he can tell us a little bit about that sometime have you ever worked for an AD that was a basketball coach i have actually the very first athletic director that that hired me at grand valley state as a head coach was a former basketball player and a former basketball coach tim selgo he coached at toledo so he we had many conversations about it he was really an offensive guy, though. And so our very first practice at Grand Valley, we didn't even have all the lights turned on. I didn't know. I thought that they were. And I didn't, how are you supposed to know those kind of things, the game lights? I didn't know. And we were practicing a lot of rebounding drills in the first day and, and watching the flight of the ball and go get it with two hands. And I'm thinking to myself, well, we'll see how this works out. But it worked out pretty well. So. I told him we didn't need all the lights. We were going to be a defensive program at that point in time until we figured that out. And then, then we figured out how to score some points. So. That's good. Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank you. Thank you.